It's not every day you're telling your own mom to be careful. Right. So Usually it's the other way around. I want... Maybe I should wait to thank you until I see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we did here in the herb garden, what will be the herb garden and what's been the herb garden in years past, is I just covered, this was covered in Bermuda grass. So I trimmed the Bermuda grass down. I put paper, cardboard, uh, or paper bags down. You can kind of see it right there. And then I covered it with mulch. If we just need to do this every year to help keep the Bermuda grass at bay, then so be it. We're just going to be doing that. Now, Holly actually did want me to keep the east side of the herb garden intact she says this this really isn't a deal of uh, bermuda grass attacking us this is something that she thinks is called speedwell which is actually a pretty cool ground cover to have this whole section of the herb garden is covered in speedwell now obviously we have some sage from last year some lavender one other thing i forget what it was which we're not sure if it's going to hold on but we're going to keep an eye on it butterfly bush which may or may not come back but the rest of the ground is covered in speedwell and some flowers that are going to be popping up. So we kept this intact. We did not cover this in paper bags or mulch. We're going to keep this as is. I think this looks a lot better than it did. And it's one step towards kind of getting the garden closer to where we need it to be. One issue that we have been dealing with a lot lately it seems like it's worse this year than in previous years is ants and when i say ants i don't just mean tiny little ant hills popping up all over the place i mean stuff like this take a look at this thing this monstrosity this is an ant hill that's taking over this old stump when i poke it you'll see the thousands of ants that come out it's gotten to the point where this ant hill is a danger to us, sure, but also primarily a danger to Henry. He's running around here all the time. Ant hills like this popping up all over the place are a concern for our little guy, him getting into them. There's one over here at this oak tree, which also has me concerned. You can just see the multitude, millions of ants that are creeping out. They're popping up all over the place, these ants even in our garden a little bit. There's one garden bed that I've yet to till and get ready for 
the gardening year that also has one of these giant mounds. Normally we try to keep things organic as possible, leave chemicals out of uh, the mix of tools that we use here on the homestead, whether that's some sort of fertilizer or pest control. There's some ant hills over there. You might be able to see them that are very close to where Henry comes in and out of the house. There's one in the garden. But anyways, like I was saying, we try to keep things like pesticides out of the mix, especially when it comes to our garden beds where we eat from. Problem is, you know, we have only had very limited success with natural organic pesticides. Here's one. There you go. We've had limited success with natural organic pesticides. But recently my mom was talking to us and we're gonna go over to my mom and dad's house on the other side of the barn here. She was talking to us and she said that she has what she thinks will be a solution for us using very simple natural ingredients that she, she claims will take care of our ant problem very quickly. So I'm gonna go talk to her, see what she's, what she's got on deck for us and then we'll give it a shot. Here, Pete. You want in, bud? Hey, Sean. Well, look who's just ready to go, ready to be filmed. Mom, you say you can take care of my ant problem. Is that true? I can certainly give it a good shot. Let's talk. Okay. Hey, Dad. Casual observer. <laughs> so, Mom says she can take care of my ant problem with simple, organic ingredients. I can. Um, now, if you have ants coming into your house, then if you know exactly where they're coming into your house, if you put like chili powder, um, paprika, just a line, they will not cross it. But they probably will find a different way in. So this, I just call it a slurry, and we're going to use borax. Borax. Which also is super good in your laundry. It's super good um, just to clean your house. It's super good just to clean your bathroom with. Um, all the directions and stuff for doing all of that's on the back. Borax has been around for a long time. Do we know what Since borax 1891. is? 1891. Boric acid. Boric acid. Yes, and okay. there's other stuff in there just to make it, I guess, more, you know, user friendly. But yes. So since 1891, is that what it says? They've been around, yep. so all natural. Around. Ingredients? Yes. Sodium borate, that's it. There's not any weird chemical. I guess sodium borate might be a chemical. Well, the one thing you want to be careful is I don't think it would kill your pets, but I don't think they would even come up to even eat it. But you just want to make sure that you, they're not getting like a bunch out there or anything. So what you're going to do, I use powdered sugar. You can use regular sugar, but I like this because it dissolves a little quicker. So we're going to do three parts sugar. And I'm not going to make like a ton, but we do have ant hills, big ant hills I'm out that. Um, in the yard, and we get a little worried about Henry. And yep. I get bit, I've gotten bitten quite a few times too, so um, we want to take care of that. And usually this will take care of it um, within 48, 24 to 48 hours. So, but I will show you another little trick that I do. Okay, so, so that, is that a half cup? No, this is a quarter cup. Quarter so cup. there's three quarters of a cup of sugar, powdered sugar, and okay. then I'm gonna put a quarter cup of borax. Yes, and then I'm just gonna mix it together. Get it really mixed, really super, you know, super well. And then add the borax spill. And then we're going to go ahead and make it into a slurry. I don't know why I call it slurry. It just sounds good. It looks, a slurry is a, is a liquid concoction. It's and I think that's concoction. what you've created yes. here. So powdered sugar, borax, water. Very simple. Yes, and you're going to stir it, stir it, stir it until it's completely dissolved. So it's going to take a couple minutes because this powdered sugar is not getting... But it does dissolve quicker than it does for um, regular sugar, so that's why I use it. So do they walk this back to their nest? Or? Well, what you're going to do, and I will show you um, here in a minute, what I do. Now, obviously, you don't want your kids to go out and do this. You're going to make sure that you're doing it yourself. 
And this gets really super sticky, as you can imagine. Yes. So if you put it on little pieces of uh, styrofoam or paper plate or whatever and put it around your house, then um, it's probably going to dry out after a while, but you can go ahead and put water on it and kind of start it all up. So again. I'm as you're mixing it up, I'm smelling it. It smells sweet. And one thing I... I uh, one thing I think about ants, an assumption I have about ants, is that they like sweet things. So my assumption is that they'll be drawn to this. Is that true? And they'll they'll yeah they'll go to this. Okay, because I was actually going to apply this in the ant hill itself. No, I wouldn't. Okay. Because if you do that, you don't know if it's going to go all the way down into the nest and kill the queen. So if you make this mixture and let the other ants take it down, then they're gonna make sure it goes all the way down into the They'll do the, the work nest. for me, okay. Yes. Go ahead and start. Do you mind filming, Dad? I'm gonna go it's, ahead and, I'm gonna add a little bit more right because I want it a little thicker. I put a little bit too much water in there. So we're just gonna kinda put a little more borax in and I will add a little bit more sugar. Make sure you don't put your, um, make sure you don't put your borax cup into the sugar powder. Keep them separate. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. All right, I'm gonna add a little more sugar to this. That, I mean, it's pretty specific about when you read it and the directions and stuff like that. They're pretty specific on measurements, but then again, I'll, I'll keep. I'll put a. Uh, I just like to. I'll put the make ingredients in the in the description but yes. a three quarter cups of borax or three quarter cups of powdered sugar mm -hmm. quarter cup of borax right a uh, cup of water and then just Not add a cup of water just as much as a, you want as much just add yeah. until you've got a thick slurry that's looking yeah. pretty syrupy and thick and slurry like okay dish. so what we're gonna do just make sure it's all as much as we can so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside. Let's go to a, one of the big ant hills. One of the big ant hills. So, so excited. I'm ready, because I hate these ants. What I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna take like a piece of styrofoam plate and just take out there. I mean, you can cut it into a lot smaller pieces. It doesn't have to be this big. But um, we'll get some of these going to see what happens. I like to stir the ants up a little bit so I can actually see them going starting to go for it. And then in the house, it's really interesting because it's, you will look and there'll be like one ant on it. And like a half an hour later, there's like a hundred ants on it. So let's right, go let's outside, go. Chuck. I just poked it and you can see they're nice and okay, angry yeah, in there. No, I'm going to, I'll get it. So, um, Oh, be careful. Your... I am. I am. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit on the plate here. And we want the ants to come to it. There's ants, ants, ants. And we these ants, closer. these ants bite. So I don't want to, um, that's the reason we're killing them. I mean, a lot of people even have a relatives like, why would you kill ants? Well, if they bite you, you will know why. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. just. For so I want safety. them to start coming. Yep, one noticed it. Yeah, and they'll kind of. I guess we don't even need this, do we? Just pour it on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think you need the plate for this. I, I did assume we need a lot of it too. No, you really don't. You really don't. So I'm gonna come over here and kind of disturb their nest. Just do it right over there. Oh my. Oh my. So here, I'm just gonna pour this like right here. And I'll see, there's a lot of them, so. What, you might want to back up some more. I have gotten bitten by these before. They're, they're crowding yeah, they're towards crowding it. it. So, and this isn't gonna kill them straight away. This'll be a process over the next few two hours. days or so, well, few hours. 24 to 48 hours. Will this hours be enough to liquid kill to kill them? I'm pretty sure it will. Let's do this one over here too. It seems like this is going to mix with dirt, so I really don't want it to mix with dirt. But as you can see, 
they're going towards it and it's because of the sugar. Okay, so should that be enough for us? I, I got am. bit. <laughs> I got bit too. Okay, let's get a little over here. You so really I'll revisit need... this maybe tomorrow and or see if... Even tonight you can come out and revisit it. I have now this is yet. interesting. The, the swarm effect has gone away. I don't know what that means. They may already be carrying it down. So I'm going to put some over here on a plate. I really didn't want it to mix with the dirt, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's a, probably so a good spot. I want these sit there. We got one ant on. Come on, guys. It's like the Kentucky Derby. Let's get you in here. And we want you to start eating that. Come on. There you go. Once they get that set, then they're going to tell the other ants, hey, guys, there's sweetness over here so come get it and I'm gonna go do that over on the other one too so you can kind of just watch that and see what happens mom. Mom. it's not every day you're telling your own mom to be careful right. so we're <laughs> usually it's the other way around what I want right. to happen and I just got bit again okay what I want to happen is for them to go on to the plate oh well, they're on it yeah they're on it so but you can they... hear them moving that's how much there are. All right, so check back either tomorrow or in a few days. No, I would check back tonight, honestly. Let's go over here to that corner. Hi, Lenny. Lenny's quite interested. Right here. Yeah, um... Okay, let's just put just some right here. In. Let's just put it around. Again, my preference is that you put it on like a little plate or something. Now, if you're inside your house doing it, yeah, you can make little, what works really good. Yeah, they like it. They're quite interested yeah. in it. What is really good to use is um, bottle caps from water bottles or pop bottles and, to, you know, put it in. And now you, that way you can put it around. Well, thank you, Mom, for showing us that. Maybe I should wait to thank you until I see if it works. <laughs> you doubt your mother. I'm sure it will work, but we're going to check on it probably by the next video. I'll give you guys a status report on how well the okay. borax worked. We appreciate you showing us this, Mom, and we'll report back to you guys how it works, how the borax in powdered sugar and water system works for dealing with ants. Now, Dad, you, you have some experience with the borax and powdered sugar method, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would say the last, I don't know, four or five years we've used it um to pretty good effect yeah yeah um general i i don't recall ever using it on humongous ant piles like that mm -hmm. just sometimes you get that little trail of ants that finds a way into your house mm -hmm. um and we've used it on that and it's and worked for that in the course of a couple of days generally uh it's it's done so the efficacy is still out in terms of those giant massive colonies yeah, i guess we'll open. see if it works yeah Thanks, Dad. Well, thank you, Mom. We really appreciate you giving us this recipe. We're gonna see how it works on these big ant colonies. Yeah. I'm not an expert on ants or anything. I'm just an old lady that has a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see how it works, and like I said, report back to you guys to see to see what, what it does. Thanks, parents. <laughs> You're welcome, son. So we're talking about ants, and there's a particular type of flower where there's this symbiotic relationship between the ants and the bulbs to open up the bulbs they need to be like agitated or they do something or the ants do something to them uh, <clears throat> and so this is up north we call them peonies um, but i haven't heard them use that kind of that phrase down here it's, it's peonies so if peony. you over here is, is it what they say down here is it peony do you guys know I call them peony. do my viewers peony. know is it peony okay <laughs> Or so peony. You, is the stress on the P or the O? If you take a close-up shot, there's ants all over these. Their job is to, they want to get the nectar and they want to go ahead and open these plants up. When the bloom's up, when the bloom is completely open, then the ants will go away. So we're not going to be putting anything on here that's no. going to harm, harm yes. the ants. No, we want the ants here. We want this. And I think, honestly, these are probably a different kind of ant. They I look mean, different. Yeah. But they look it, friendly. 
if you <laughs> look this up online, it's super interesting how these how they work together. Ants, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ants are actually helping the peonies open, and this peony bush will get huge. And this was a pink one, so awesome. Well, thank you guys. All right. As you folks can imagine, it's a really busy time of year for us. Once I've kind of completed the task of sifting through those, those bonus compost piles that I've found, I'm going to load them here into the tractor, into the bucket, and then bring them out close to the garden. I'm going to give the garden beds another till, and then I'm going to start filling them up with that compost, both the bonus compost and the quote unquote curated compost. The compost that we've been working at are, are our kitchen pile of compost that we've been working at for the past few years. A lot of folks gave us really good pointers about getting the chickens involved in our compost pile. And so one of the things that I'm thinking about doing, you'll note where I'm standing right now, here in a month or so, this tractor isn't gonna be parked here. This mower isn't gonna be parked here. This is gonna be the run for our meat chickens, for the breast chickens. The chickens are in the incubator at the moment. Uh, there's 13 or 14 eggs. I know it can only hold 12, but we put two extra ones in, so 14 eggs. Uh, hopefully we get 14 chicks that hatch out of the breast chickens. Um, but even if we get 10, 9, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, no matter what the hatch rate will be. I'm very happy to get any breast chicks. This is going to be their run. Now down there, I'll pick up the camera. That's the area that I've been clearing my compost, uh, clearing the area. So the brush, which remains to be finished, there's just a little chunk of brush, honeysuckle, old trees, some raspberry bushes that I'm going to knock down along with that junk that I still need to cart off. Once that's all knocked down, that will just be open. I intend to have the meat chickens range out towards the compost. I'd like those meat chickens to be in charge of working that compost. I'll walk down with you guys. I'd like them to be in charge of working the compost. Now, another thing that we really want to get going, I mentioned in the previous video, is some berry bushes somewhere around here. So berry bushes, maybe some more, I don't know, strawberries or something down here. And then the compost. We've got the bonus compost pile. We've got the curated compost pile. And I'm going to try and consolidate them all in this area. The chickens will be situated right there, but I'm going to move their run out so that they can actually browse in the compost and they can work the compost for us, the meat chickens, the breast chickens. That's the plan at the moment. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. As busy as I've been, it's been it's been hard sometimes to just pick up the camera between the part-time job and Henry and all this garden prep that I've been doing. The idea of picking up the camera and recording stuff has sometimes slipped me. That being said, there's so much going on and I did feel like it was important to share this borax, potential borax remedy. I'm saying potential till we have confirmation that those ants have died, that colonies died, but I'll report back on that. So thanks for hanging out with us. Lenny and I, as always, wish you a good day and to remember until next time, slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm.